Welcome to section 4.1, part 2. This is where we will be going through part B, or numbers similar to part B, numbers 11 through 13, or part C, numbers 11 through 14. So what we are asked to do is create a spreadsheet of a table with a growth of a savings account for 20 years that begins with $200 and receives a $25 deposit each month growing at 6% and the table should show uh, the yearly values at the end of each year. They also gave us in the answer a chart that looks very similar to what I have set up here. So I've given us the information that we need. Uh, part C, number 14, will change the percent and on uh, both of them, number 13 or number 12, make the graph. So we'll come over here and we'll make the graph. So the first thing we want to do is I'm going to create the chart similar to number 11. Yours does not have to look exactly like this though. There's lots of different ways you can uh, formulate this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick with making mine look as similar to the answer as possible so it's a little less confusing. So we have T for the time, R for the interest rate, N for the number of compounds, P for the principal, PMT for payment, uh, uh, rate, this will coordinate, both of these will coordinate with uh, the future value function of Excel, N per is the number of periods and the amount will be the Excel function calculating. The first thing I want to do is just fill in my uh, years over here and I'm going to show Excel that I want to follow a pattern of just increasing by one. So I'm going to type in a one and a two, then left click and drag, and that says Excel uh, can pick up the pattern, and I'm going to pull it down to 20. Oops. One more for 20 years. There we go. Okay, and the rate is 6%, so 0 0.06, and this is the rate for the entire problem. So I'm going to fill it in. Uh, the number of compounds in our case is 12. We're also making monthly payments. Okay, and the principal was $200. And it's going to be $200 again for the whole thing. Now some of you are thinking, well wait a minute. Couldn't I have just filled in these four here and then clicked and dragged all the way down? And I could have done that. However, over here, I would have had to put a formula so that I could click and drag for the whole way. Uh, so in that case, I would have to do equals the cell above plus one and then these ones, click and drag to here. Oh, and I could have put in my payment. I'm going to be paying in $25 a month there and then I can highlight those and drag that down to 20 years. Now one of the benefits of clicking and dragging the time uh, as quickly as I did is that uh, if you do the pattern one two and just drag it like that you'll see that the numbers show up so I know how far down I'm going. So I kind of like that. Uh, I prefer that one. All right, now if we're filling it out to look exactly like the answer, we can keep going with the rate and the n per. We don't have to though, those we can just calculate in at the end. So the rate, this is going to be how we fill in the rate for the future value function. And the rate will be my interest rate divided by the number of compounds. In this case it's 12 and I'm doing a cell reference. Uh, so that later if you wanted to change it for the number of compounds being um, something different or the number of times that you're making the payment. There we go. And again, this will be the same for the entire way down. You do not have to do this step. If you would uh, like to skip it, go ahead. And then the number of periods, this equals the number of compounds and then times that by the number of years. So for the first year, you only have 12 compounds. Uh, after two years, you have 24 and so on, all the way down to 20 years. Okay, now you'll notice that mine's slightly different. I did a positive principal and a positive payment. Um, I'm considering this a savings account, and so this is money. Of course, I am not spending this money, so it 
is going away from my pocket, but it is going into my bank account, which I think is an investment, so I did those positive. But to counteract that, I'm going to do a negative future value. So we have two ways of making this positive. Uh, we can make the payment and the principal negative, or I can just say, I know this is going to assume um, that uh, it's a debt or something that has to be paid off, so I'm going to counteract that with the negative out in front. All right, now it's asking for rate. So I can click here and cell reference my rate. If I didn't want to do that step, because I told you you wouldn't have to, you can skip these two columns here so it doesn't have to match exactly with number 11, uh, your answer on page 144. We can reference the rate here, but you do have to divide by n. So you have both of those. You can do it within the Excel function or like on their answer, you could just reference here. So either way works. Uh, number of periods, you can again cell reference here or instead of cell referencing in this column we can do exactly what we did there which is taking uh, n per or n and timesing it by the number of years which is exactly what we did to find and calculate the numbers for these two columns so either way works you can use uh, these ones or you can just recalculate it or just calculate it once without these columns Okay, now I'm going to reference my payment and my present value is the principal and press enter. There we go. And this is matching for uh, your answer on page 144. And now because all of these are cell referenced and I didn't type any numbers in, these are all cells. I'm just going to click here, one left click, and then drag it down, fill in the rest of my chart. There we go. And we want to answer the next questions, which are uh, to find, oh, make a graph and then find out how much money was paid into the savings account and how much money was earned. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and do the graph. So I'm going to highlight my uh, time or the years, then press control and left click and pull down for the money. So now I have both of those highlighted and insert a graph. Other, over here I'm going to do my scatter and I'm going to do this one and that shows what happens to the bank account. And I can change this again like in the previous um, tutorial or video lecture. I kind of like this one and then I would put the amount in the savings and this is number of years in the savings and that's how I would insert my graph. Uh, to change a percent, oh I'm going to do that later for part C. So part B, number 13 says how much money was paid into the savings account. So here I have my payment, I'm making $25 payments every month for this many years, and that's 20 years. So I'm going to come down here and just calculate it under my payment. So I'm going to put, I'm going to label this, this is going to be the total amount of payments. So equals $25 times 12 months a year for 20 years. This gives us a total of $6,000 uh, contributing through payments. But don't forget, we had the original principal that we added in as well, $200. So I'm going to press equals my $6,000 plus my principal. That's how much money I contributed to the entire savings account. Now if I contributed $6,200 and at the end of 20 years I have $12,000, I just need to subtract and that will tell me how much money I earned in, save, uh, in interest. So under here I'm going to press equals, take the total, and subtract how much money was contributed and that's going to give me the interest. And I'll label it there and I'm going to highlight these so that I know that's how much I contributed, that's how much 
was done in interest. Now if I've set this up correctly in Excel, in section 4.1 part C, it asks, I believe the same questions, but changing the percent. So how much interest is earned if the account grows at 9%. So we're changing ours a little differently so it's not the exact same and these because they are cell referencing and not just typing in the answers in your calculator or using numbers here, we're using cell references, if I change the percent it'll also change my answers to be correct as well. So I'm going to change this to 8%, point zero eight. Now uh, some of you have seen my other tutorials in which I did 8% this direction that way. Either way, Microsoft Excel uh, will understand how to change that back to a decimal. So you could do 0 0.08 or you could put 8% and you'll see it changed it to be the exact way or the exact same. So then I come down here, I highlight the whole thing, so it's 8% and it changes. Why didn't it change here? Some of you might be thinking that. Well, I didn't change the amount that I contributed each month and I didn't uh, change the amount of the principal. If I wanted those to change, then the principal or the payment should change. And those are self-referenced, so that's fine. And in this case, it uh, earned $9,000, $9.5,000 uh, in interest. And that's how you would answer question number 14 on part C. All right, that is section 4.1, part 2. Good luck on your homework.